Hey everybody. Today we're approaching analysis of variance or ANOVA from a very practical point of view, leaving the math aside almost entirely to focus on what ANOVA is, when to use it, and how to interpret the results. ANOVA has a reputation of being a very difficult topic because the math underneath the hood really is difficult, but when we leave that aside and just focus on how to use it, it's really not that bad. So ANOVA is used to test whether a quantitative variable is independent from a categorical variable. A bit more mathematically, we're testing the null hypothesis that the mean of the quantitative variable is the same in, for every level of the categorical variable. That is, its mean is the same across groups. For instance, doctors might wonder whether people of different age groups respond equally to a new blood pressure medicine, or whether several different medications are all equally effective. The basic idea of analysis of variance is to compare the variability of the data within the groups to the variability between the groups. And this all sounds very abstract until we get some pictures. So here I'm imagining two different studies. We have sample data in each case. And in each case, the sample means are the same within each group. So in the first case, on the left, we have three groups with these different means. There's very little overlap of the data. And so this is going to be providing pretty decent evidence that in the larger population, the group means are going to be different. In the second case, on the other hand, in the right plot, we have three different groups where there is a lot of overlap between the data. Even though the group means are exactly the same as in the first case, because there's so much more spread in the data, there's much more overlap in these distributions, the evidence that the group means are different in the larger population is actually much weaker. The difference between the group means is more significant in the first case because of the lower variability within the groups. More specifically, ANOVA looks at the ratio of the between groups variance and the within groups variance, both appropriately defined and weighted. I'm going to flash the math here but not really talk about it. I have a longer vid that goes into the math in more detail. I'll throw a link up top. If the null hypothesis is true and the quantitative variable is the same on average between the different groups in the larger population, then this thing that we're calculating, this ratio that we're calculating has an F distribution. And we can use that to compute a p-value and make a decision. Analysis of variance has three basic assumptions. First of all, all the observations have to be independent of one another. The response variable must be normally distributed within each group in the larger population, and the variances within the groups all have to be equal in the larger population. Now, of these three, ANOVA is pretty robust against the second two assumptions, as long as your sample size is reasonable, particularly normality. And this is all because the central limit theorem ends up kicking in. So um, you don't have to worry about those two unless there's extreme um, uh, departure from equal variances and from normal distributions within each group. The first assumption of, ascend of independence is more important. This is usually having more to do with the design of the experiment and, has to, and um, if you don't have independent observations, ANOVA is probably just not the appropriate method of statistical inference to use. Um, a quick example to have in mind before we actually get the results of an ANOVA and talk about how to interpret those and use those. Researchers are measuring the lengths in millimeters of a certain species of flower, of petals of those flowers. So here's some sample data. We've got uh, five, six, and seven observations, so very small sample sizes for each of these three um, different groups. If we plot that for the three different groups, just doing a very simple dot plot for each of these groups, um, we can see both the group means. Here I've labeled them Y1 bar, Y2 bar, and Y3 bar we can see that there are differences between them apparently, and so we might think this would give us some evidence that the, petal length, the average petal length for these three different groups are going to be different in the larger population. We can also see that there's a lot of variability within these groups, and in particular these three distributions all overlap a fair amount. The variability within the groups is fairly large compared to the variability between the groups. So when we run an ANOVA, we're going to try and compare those variances and take um, a ratio of the overall variability between groups to the overall variability within groups. Now, ANOVA is 
always perform using technology these days. You almost certainly will not have to deal with the math unless you are in a specifically mathematically oriented statistics class. I use R, that's the typical, um, one very typical way of doing it. In R, the command is AOV. And uh, whether you're using R or any other sort of technology, the results will be given to you in an ANOVA table like this. And in that longer, more mathy video, I talk about what these things mean a bit more specifically. In practice, the only one you're going to care about is going to be the p-value at the end. And this is representing the probability of data like what you got in your sample occurring by chance when the null hypothesis is true. That is, when in the larger population, the means are the same in each of the different groups. In this case, we have a p-value of 0.335. P-values are always going to be between 0 and 1. Lower p-values indicate stronger evidence against the null hypothesis. That is, against the claim that the quantitative variable is independent from the categorical one and that the group means are the same for the quantitative variable across all the different groups. P equals 0.335 is saying that there is not strong evidence for that. We're going to um, say that the data is consistent with that null hypothesis and draw no further conclusions. Now, even when the null hypothesis is rejected, the conclusion of an analysis of variance is pretty weak. The alternative hypothesis is just that at least one of the group means is different in one group from a group mean in at least one other group. Um, so it doesn't say which groups are potentially different, and it doesn't say how different they potentially are. To answer those kinds of questions, you need an after the fact or post hoc test. The most common and simplest one is the Tukey Honest Significant Differences Test, which, roughly speaking, performs um, a lot of different pairwise um, t-tests. So for every pair of categories, you get um, a paired t-test between those two. Um, because you have all of those repeated tests, the probability of a type 1 error ends up being pretty high, and the Tukey Honest Significant Differences Test accounts for that by making the cutoff value for statistical significance much lower. At some point, I'll record a, record a whole video on the Tukey Honest Significance Differences test. When that happens, I'll make sure that there's a link up top for that. 